Iron Butterfly. With me right now, I have Ron Bushy, uh, Phil Kramer, and Bill DiMartinis. And also Eric Braun is with Iron Butterfly, but he's not here right now, uh, getting a bite to eat. They're playing at the Civic Center tonight at 8 o'clock. And uh, we'll just let Ron, he's one of the original members of Iron Butterfly. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the group? <laughs> that was... Uh... That was an empty Coke bottle. Yeah, a little bit about the group. Well, we got together back in uh, 67 in San Diego. Um, back together? No, we got together in 67 in San Diego. Uh, came to L.A. and uh, to make it, so to speak, and uh, we got a rec recording contract. And uh, Bill, stop looking at it that way. <laughs> <We had> to... <laughs> Give me a break. And uh, You're doing good, I'm not too good on the radio. I get all embarrassed. And I'm kind of shy. But anyway, uh, we recorded the first album, Heavy, and then uh, a couple of guys left in that group, and uh, we got Eric Braun and Lee Dorman and uh, Doug Engel, myself, and we recorded in God of the Vida, and then went, went ahead to do Ball and Live and... Uh, and that group uh, more or less disbanded, and uh, we got two more guitar players, Eric, uh, not Eric, Rhino, and uh, Mike Panera, and did the, the album uh, Metamorphosis. And uh, after we toured the U.S. and uh, through Europe and England, uh, we broke up, and <clears throat> broke up for good this time. And then eight months, nine months ago, approximately, we decided to get back together again. So Eric and I uh, went out and got, uh, found Bill D. Martinez uh, playing organ and uh, Phil Kramer on bass. We started rehearsing and writing songs and got a new contract with MCA Records and uh, recorded the Scorching Beauty, which is our new album, out on MCA now. And we're just touring uh, to promote the album throughout uh, North America. One question, and I'm sure a lot of people, uh, myself, uh, ever since I found out I was going to do this interview, this is one question I want to ask you. What ever possessed you to write in the God of Davida? What's it about? The devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's, about uh, it's about life itself, you know, whatever life means to you. The way it started, though, um, it started off to be a, like a two-minute song, uh, Doug Engel on organ, he wrote the song to begin with, and uh, uh, it started out to be uh, in the Garden of Eden, and uh, he got drunk on some uh, Red Mountain wine, so cheap California wine, and I came back home from work that night. I was making pizzas at the time to supplement our income, and uh, he played the song for me, and he came out to... Uh, in the Garden of Eden, instead of in the Garden of Eden, and I thought that was kind of clever, so I wrote it down, and it uh, came out uh, at rehearsal, uh, instead of like a two-minute song, we all put our two cents in, and uh, came out to 17 minutes, and it just kind of a trip through life, you know. Your drum solo in that, uh, at the time of the record was released for about a year and a half after that, just about every drummer that you can imagine trying to pick up the the right way to do it. Um, did you uh, plan it that way? Were you just jamming along, figuring things out, and it just happened, or what? Well, I worked a long time to get the tone that I was getting, and... Uh, like the drums were uh, a cheap pearl Japanese set, and I did some uh, fiberglassing on the inside of them, and I made my own drum heads. So uh, that's how I got that that deep sound, you know, like a jungle type drum. And then uh, <clears throat> those heads were uh, marketed by Remo, and that's what the head, uh, those black dot control sound heads are now one with a patch in the middle that was uh, that's how I got the sound on, on the, the drums also in the studio we phased the drums which is the first time phasing had ever been used and now phasing is used on a lot of things in the studio uh, and vocals and guitar and what have you that's that swishing swirling effect back and forth that um, 
But I believe, you know, drums are a musical instrument. I believe in they, they should say something, tell a story. And uh, I think drum solos should be the same. They should have structure and uh, they should mean something instead of just a bunch of garbage. So. How long have you been playing drums? Uh, I started six months before uh, we formed uh, Iron Butterfly in San Diego. What year was it? Well, it was about 66 when uh, I started playing. So there's two members of the original group left. That's one thing that uh, does intrigue me is that um, while there's the two members left at original and the name Iron Butterfly, that sort of stands out to a lot of people. Yeah, well, the name, we, we put a lot of thought in behind the name. We wanted to... Uh, uh, we wanted the name to be indicative of how we wanted to uh, uh, grow, and uh, and how we wanted our music to grow along with us, just as a butterfly. He goes through stages and uh, of growth, you know, like the the caterpillar and the, the pupa larva stage, and then the, the butterfly itself. And the very first song we wrote is uh, Iron Butterfly theme, and it is like a uh, a symphony in three movements uh, depicting the uh, changes a butterfly goes through in growth. You know. Okay, hey, thank you, uh, Ron Bushy, uh, one of the original members of Iron Butterfly, Phil Kramer. I'd like to pull your chair up here and talk for a second. <laughs> um, you've just started with the group recently, well, eight months ago. Um, did you play with any major groups before this, or recording records, or was this your first fairly big break with a uh, well-known band? Well, I'd, I'd been doing a lot of recording and just bumming around in Hollywood and things like that, but uh, it was pretty much my major thing. See, uh, I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, if you know where that's at. <laughs> well, to me it was something really big. Actually, it was a little more than a year, year ago, but uh, I'd been playing with Ron before that for about six months. We had a group together called White Elephant, and we'd been working together, and uh, we were just good friends. Um, you, you say for about a year you've been working together. How have you found it uh, working with Ron and Eric as two of the original members of Iron Butterfly? Well, they're, they're both extremely professional and uh, they're good people. Everything we've been doing is, you know, it's kind of like a family type thing. We're always together. We're always doing, you know, whatever ha has to be done. And uh, it's more uh, pleasure than business. That's a, a major thing in bands where you can enjoy yourselves. You're not, you never get tired of being together. <laughs> well, there are a few times, but uh, I know we've been on the road quite a bit, pretty much steady for quite a while now, and uh, we still stick it out really good. I mean, get along just like it was the first day we met, friends. Uh, this new LP you, you've released, uh, do you yourself write any songs on that? Yeah, I have a song on there called High on a Mountaintop. Uh, it's one of the songs on the first side. And, uh, Not smooth. <laughs> yeah, really. But uh, I sing another song called Pearly Gates, which Ron wrote here. I don't know if you're familiar with the group called Yes, but uh, John Anderson and Ron wrote the song uh, together, and uh, it's a good song. <laughs> it's a good song. Um, the LP, uh, I know a lot of bands or groups that do travel around, they bring records with them to sell. Have you, do you have any that you will be selling, or is it just pick it up in a record store? Or? <laughs> well, uh, MCA pretty much covers us everywhere we go. I notice up here MCA uh, has a lot of releases, you know, like Elton John and uh, uh, Leonard Skinner. They're all MCA groups. and uh, I guess you can order it, but we, we don't stock our own, you know. Uh, it's um, just... An idea, I guess. That I don't know. Do they have the, the record up here in the stores? I I didn't know that you had a new one released. I was uh, looking in the store the other day, and they had uh, your old uh, one of your old LPs in there, and that was uh, about it for now. Um, but it is released now and on on sale. Right, it is. Yeah. And what's the name of it? Uh, Scorching Beauty. Scor MCA, uh, number four sixty five, isn't it? <laughs> Got it right down to a pat. Okay, one more fella sitting here, Bill DiMartinis. Uh, I practiced that before I said it. DiMartinis. Oh, I go by a lot of names. Call you anything but late for breakfast. <laughs> well, if this kind of food I've been having lately, you can call me late for breakfast. Say. You seem like um, the fellow that gets on stage and the fall guy or the joke guy. Uh, it's nothing. It's 
everything they said is false. Okay. It's all, it's all, uh, it's not my fault. The rumors are not true. And uh, the rumors are not true, except that one and that one, but that's okay. I really don't know what the answer to it. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, things, a lot of times they don't, they're, um, nobody's going to understand me, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> all right, color. getting. That's my favorite color. <laughs> No, that's uh, David Cassidy style. Back, <laughs> back to um, uh, serious little things. The organ. Now you've been playing with them, them for <laughs> about, well, a, I guess about a year now. Um, how have you found playing with the band? Or have you taken a different attitude towards your music since you've joined them? Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually the late comer in the group. There was another keyboard player that did the album, and his name's Howard Reitzes. And um, there were some minor conflicts, and they needed a new keyboard player. And at the beginning of the year, they uh, saw me lying in a gutter <laughs> and said, uh, "Oh, that'd be a nice uh, you know, guy to bring up from the from down below." And uh, so I started playing with them uh, in the beginning of the year. And uh, I don't know. I've had gas. You know, I like it. Everybody's open to new and better things, you know, and that's what makes things progress, you know, when you're not hung on one thing. So, like, musically, everybody's looking to everybody else, plus to themselves, you know. Did you like Iron Butterfly before you started playing with him? Uh, I was into a whole different thing. I used to play trumpet, and I was more into a jazz rock thing like Chicago and... Oh, along that line, you know, where it was TJB when they first came out, and you know, I used to play in bands like that. And I haven't been playing, I've been playing keyboards for oh, a few years, you know. What's so TJB? like T1 Brass, oh. you know, when they came out with T1, you know, uh, Lonely Bull and stuff like that. You know, they're from San Diego too. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that's where A and M, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Albert, yeah. That's where his head uh, the office is. Garage in Claremont. That's where I'm from. Claremont? Yeah. Boy, Claire, there's a Claremont in L.A. too. Yeah, well, that's Claremont in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's close down there with the, with the uh, you know. So you haven't recorded a record with them yet? Uh, no, no. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am, very much so. I think uh, the this next album will be... I think it'll be one of the best out on the market because, uh, I don't know, you know, a lot of times you're so close to your music that you really can't tell what type of thing it will hit, you know, how it will hit anything. And, uh, oh, they went my nose. <laughs> uh, you know, because when you write something, you enjoy it or you wouldn't have wrote it in the first place. You know, it's that type of thing. But I stepped in at a particular time in, in the evolution of the butterfly and uh, I've got not only a outside look but an inside look too so I've got both sides and I think some of the new material that's going to be on the album is, is phenomenal like some of the acoustical stuff that Eric's written and some other slock jobs that everybody I mean not, <laughs> <laughs> not really did you have uh, have you had any hand in writing music since you've been with them uh, no two feet no pair of shoes no um, I've co-wrote I'm starting to co-write some stuff um I tell you, it's really hard because uh, since the beginning of the year, I think uh, about uh, three-fourths of the time we've been on the road. And when we're on the road, I'm away from a piano. You know, it's hard to get a piano into your hotel room, and which really limits me. And the only time I can ever write is uh, when I get back to L.A. So, like, you know, that, there, that's when I get frustrated. It's, uh, it's not being away from home or it's not being around people too much. It's being away from a piano. And uh, I get kicked out of a uh, hotel um, banquet room sometimes because I'll go down there and try to play piano. Um, this is probably a high fetch question, but is there any, do you have anything to do with trumpet playing while you're with Iron Butterfly? Uh, no, I uh, took my lip back and I got a rental now. It's, uh, it's a little bit better job this time. No, I quit. Uh, I was getting headaches when I was playing trumpet. So uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit less headachey and play loud rock music and blow my brains out, you know. No. Uh, do you do any vocals? Uh, I have to attempt. I'm Italian, you know. And ever since I was a little kid, my mom says, you can sing. And I went, ah, ah, and it didn't work. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to uh, 
uh, Bill, actually, um, let's sort this out. Who is the lead singer? Uh, well, Eric does uh, most of the lead singing, and uh, next in line is Phil. Uh, he does the lead vocal on uh, about three of them. And tie my shoelace back, please. That's not a name of a song. It's, he always does that, Phil. And Bill, he hasn't lead sung yet, but. Your first. Uh, is this your first tour up into the Central Interior of British Columbia? Yeah. We've never been up this high. How do you like it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so good, man. Right up. It's. I tell you, we drove from Calgary in the equipment truck, uh, Phil, myself, and the two equipment guys. We drove from Calgary through Banff and uh, on up uh, to, through Jasper. You know, we went uh, 93, which is uh, through the park. We weren't supposed to, but we did anyway. And it was so beautiful. And like it was really strange. The sun didn't even go down until about quarter to midnight. And then we left Jasper uh, about 12, 12.30, and about 3.15, the, the sun started coming back up again. I couldn't believe it. It was so Does weird. It do here? Does it do that here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're on a, actually a tour of Canada uh, promoting your new LP. Uh, from here you go to Terrace, Kitimat, Prince Rupert. Um, How's your response been in Canada so far to uh, your music and Iron Butterfly back in the music industry? It's been it's been real fine. Uh, you know, we were out of business. We were out of like circulation for so darn long. You know, we broke up for almost four years, and we hadn't had product out or anything. So it's like we've had to start over again, just about. And it's been it's been hard. But it, uh, everybody wants to hear Inagata De Vida, and we'll play it tonight. Um, but we're trying to, uh, you know, get get into a new thing, you know. Okay, now you say a new thing. You're Inagata De Vida, uh, that came out at the time where people were really into that style of music. And uh, myself, I like the song. I still like the song. Um, what style of music are you doing now? How How different is it from... Inagata De Vida in your first LP and um, Iron Butterfly theme? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's really hard for me to describe it. It's uh, it's, it's rock. It's uh, musical. It's melodic. Uh, I don't know. You just have to listen for yourself. And, you know, I don't like to classify things. So I, it's just, it's good music. I enjoy playing and it's all is all of your new LP is it all written yourselves yeah we write everything ourselves we get so much material that's coming out of our uh, pan leg you know it just just we don't know what to do with it all I mean, we wish we had more time to like arrange and, and uh, record all the stuff we have um so you have a new pal, new LP out, new pal, new LP out right now, and Bill was saying that uh, your next LP. Do you have any idea when that would be released? Well, not exactly, but we plan on going in the studio about uh, the latter part of June. Hopefully, we'll be recording it at Caribou Ranch in uh, Colorado, so where Chicago records and uh, Elton John and a lot of. Uh, see, we were up there just visiting and up in the caribou which uh is up out of the netherland in colorado upside up, up about 60 miles out of boulder beautiful country up there and uh, we visited up there check the studios out and, um what's his name uh, frank zappa was up there recording that's a phenomenal studio it's like over a mile high you know it's i i don't know how what the elevation is here the elevation is like six thousand feet up there and it's they got oxygen tanks in the studio, you know, because the people from you know L.A. come up there, and it's there's not that's really thin air, and so uh, you know, everybody's got to take a hit of oxygen every every five ten minutes, otherwise you pass out. Okay, a couple of final last questions. Uh, 
As uh, I imagine you are the leader of the band, or you and Eric, maybe there's no leader, but seeing as you're the original members, uh, if the turnout goes good, say for like the Smithers, Terrace, Kitimat, Prince Super Derry, would you come back? Sure, I'd love to come back. I love this country. I think maybe. I wish they would fix the roads up there. I hope our I hope our equipment works. I'm not kidding. There's those there's big chuck holes in the road. And we went over this bridge like at two o'clock in the morning the other day. <clears throat> and this um, we could barely get the truck through. It was a little wooden bridge, and I don't know what the gross weight capacity of the bridge was. <laughs> But he, I had to send Phil down into the creek with a flashlight to, to look at, watch the wooden girders, you know, that, that were holding this little wooden bridge up. And as I drove it across, man, the bridge bowed in the middle, you know, it was really freaky. <laughs> you guys got more than too. Okay, uh, that's Ron Bushy, one of the original members. Uh, it's too bad we couldn't get uh, Eric Braun here. He's also one of the original members. Bill, any last comments? Um, serious oh serious that's not, I was just gonna go <laughs> no I just hope a lot of people come out and I hope they're uh, you know they just want to party you know uh, like Ron was saying uh, of course everybody wants to hear a little bit of the old you know but we want to be able to play some of the new and have people get off to it with an open mind you know not categorizing us, categorizing us as the old butterfly it's a whole new thing it's because um, people change, you know. Ron and Eric have changed, you know, and and uh, you know just just kind of sit back and I hope everybody digs it tonight because we will. <laughs> I'm sure you By will. The way, there's a, Randy, there's a, a really far out group uh, playing with his Steel, and they're really a bunch of mm -hmm. fine guys and excellent musicians, and you all really get off on them. Okay, that's uh, Steel and Iron Butterfly tonight at the Civic Center at eight o'clock, and that's already underway. Um, Ron, or, yes, Phil Kramer. <laughs> it's not quite 8 o'clock, but... <laughs> <laughs> Phil Kramer, the bass player. Uh, any last comments? Uh, I'd like to say hi to my mother. And... <laughs> I was just going <laughs> to... No, I just... Kramer you know, Magnetics Limited. Oh, yeah. right. No, if, uh, if uh, any of the people tonight want to say hi to us, you know, we like to talk to the people, too. Sometimes they feel a little off, so if they want to come back and say hi, you know, I wish they would. Okay, fantastic. Phil Kramer, uh, Ron Bushy, and Bill DiMartinis. DiMartinis. DiMartinis, that's uh, Italian. And Eric Braun, uh, all of Iron Butterfly, a group called Steel, opening the show tonight at 8 o'clock at the Civic Center in Smithers. And for the interview, that will already, already be underway. And also, I will be giving away tickets to this concert uh, this evening. So if you're sitting at home and you hear a question about Iron Butterfly, uh, just give me a call, and I'll give you a ticket. You can truck on down there. Good luck, gentlemen. We hope to see you back. Bye. Thanks a million. Thank you.